right, your next performer is Richard Panic. He is the author of The 4% Universe, Dark Matter, Dark Energy, and the Race to Discover the Rest of Reality. He's also a regular contributor at the science writing website, Last Word on Nothing. Welcome, Richard Panic. <laughs> uh, so, Kasha mentioned uh, that uh, I write for this science writing website called Last Word on Nothing, and occasionally, is that a shout out? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so occasionally, uh, as part of my contribution, I do a feature called um, Ask Mr. Cosmology, so I put together some of those columns into into. I'm sorry. Can you raise that up? Yes. Is that better? But yes. Thank you. Okay. So as part of this website that I contribute to, I um, occasionally do a column called, very occasionally do a column called uh, Ask Mr. Cosmology, and I put together some of them for time. <clears throat> Time again to reach into the Ask Mr. Cosmology mailbag and see what readers want to know about the wonders of the universe. Question, why does the full moon look larger near the horizon than when it's higher in the sky? Mr. Cosmology, because it is. <laughs> Question, how many stars are there in the universe? Mr. Cosmology. Count all the grains of sand on Earth. When you're done, I'll tell you. <laughs> Question, what is time? Mr. Cosmology, is five after nine. <laughs> Question, I have a light, almost porcelain complexion. I'm a natural brunette, and I've always been fine with that, but I think I wouldn't mind a change. I'm wondering if there's a shade that might complement my features. Mr. Cosmology, you're thinking of S. Mr. Cosmetology. <laughs> And it's Hannah. <laughs> Question, what's the difference between astronomy and astrology? Mr. Cosmology, three letters, yet only one point, assuming neither word has a blank. <laughs> and you're thinking of Ask Mr. Scrabble. <laughs> How do you drive cosmologists crazy? Mr. Cosmology, put them in a saddle-shaped universe and tell them there's an NSF grant in the corner. <laughs> Question. You've met a lot of cosmologists. What are they like? Mr. Cosmology. They sit around in their underwear all day, they're drunk by three in the afternoon, and their idea of a good time is chasing squirrels off the garage roof with a baseball bat. <laughs> Question. Really? Mr. Cosmology. Oh, wait, sorry. Mr. Cosmology was thinking of the next door neighbor when he was growing up. <laughs> Question. Speaking of alcohol, does booze ever play a, a part in the study of the universe? Mr. Cosmology. Yes. It provides the only known method for testing the fundamental principle behind uncertainty theory, that you can't simultaneously measure your position and velocity. <laughs> Question, when is the universe going to end, Mr. Cosmology? Right about now. <laughs> Question, you were wrong. Mr. Cosmology, did I mention that the margin of error is plus or minus infinity? <laughs> Question, you mean eternity. Mr. Cosmology, you say eternity, I say infinity, let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> How would you define the universe? Mr. Cosmology, Mr. Cosmology just told you, off. <laughs> Question, knowing as much as you do about the workings of the cosmos, are you still able to look up at the night sky and feel awe? Mr. Cosmology, let's just say that sometimes when reading a letter from the mailbag, Mr. Cosmology casts his eyes toward the heavens and goes, wow. <laughs> Question. Well, if we don't know when the universe is going to end, do we at least know when it began? Mr. Cosmology. Nobody can say for sure. All we can be certain about is that it's older than Florence Green. Question. Who? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cosmology. Florence Green, born in 1901, had been the last surviving veteran of World War I when she died recently. She was a member of Britain's Royal Air Force. Well, not when she died, but in 1918. For all of two months, starting in September, serving meals at a mess hall in rural England, 
where, according to an interview she gave to the Daily Mail in 2010, quote, I met dozens of pilots and would go on dates. <laughs> Question. I fail to see the relevance of this discussion. <laughs> Mr. Cosmology. Dozens of pilots in two months. This is a science column. Do the math. <laughs> Question, I'm still not convinced this has anything to do with cosmology. <laughs> Mr. Cosmology, it has everything to do with our connection to, the, to everything else in the universe. Do you not feel a connection when a bird drops from the sky, or a plane, or an alien brandishing a glowing rod? Didn't we all dance around the common campfire at the cradle of civilization, many of us probably naked? And so it is with Florence, especially the naked part. <laughs> Who among us will not miss the gossamer experience of being able to look at a photograph or a newsreel from the Great War and thinking, they're probably all dead, but I can't be absolutely sure because maybe one or two are still alive, so that face over there, for instance, or that one over there. I can't look at it specifically and say with certainty, oh yeah, that person's dead, no question. Because for all I know, he or she might be sitting in a veteran's home in Britain or a veteran's hospital in the United States or a veteran's pasture in Bulgaria. But now we do know, and are we not more united in our common? Are we not more united in our common humanity because of that knowledge? At the very least, we are more united than was Mr. Cosmology's family that time we were on a picnic and an alien brandishing a glowing rod dropped from the sky, and we all went pro her or pro pro him, depending on which loved one was nearest to where each of us was sitting. Question: I'm beginning to think that cosmology has no practical value. Mr. Cosmology, you're wrong. It's 17, unless you're using a blank. Thank you.